Now we have learnt a little bit about vectors, right? Where are vectors used? It's used everywhere. Okay, all almost every chapter in physics you will find vectors is the starting point. Okay, everything will basically start with vectors. Let us take two examples just to kind of understand how to use vectors. Okay, what we are going to do now is to look at vectors and motion. I'm going to really simplify things. We are now going to look at cases where there is no acceleration, uniform motion. So, earlier we were talking about objects moving in straight lines like this or like that, right? Vertical or horizontal. Now they are still moving in straight lines, but they can be moving in this direction. And we will refer to this. Let us talk about this. Now, if I tell you that this object has a velocity v, it is a vector, right? So let us say 3i cap plus 4j cap meters per second. First question, what is the speed of the object? So the speed of the object is the magnitude of the velocity. Okay, so we will write it like this. That's why we don't have a separate symbol called speed. Okay, because we just have to take the magnitude of the velocity as long as it is uniform or if it is instantaneous velocity. So what will be the magnitude of this velocity? Root of 3 square plus 4 square which is 5 meters per second. So that is the speed. Now you know that velocity into time gives me the displacement. So suppose this object was moving for 3 seconds. It would basically move in this direction, right? What would be the displacement of the object? What is S? S vector is going to be this into 3, 9i cap plus 4 into 3, 12j cap, but no longer meters per second because it's meters per second into seconds, so so many meters. This is my ending point. The displacement from here to there, let me call this A, let us call that B. Now I have not got the position of B, I have got the displacement AB. So S is the displacement AB. So once you know the velocity, you can find out what the displacement is. Velocity vector into time, it will tell you how much you have moved in the X direction, how much you have moved in the Y direction. How much have you moved in the X direction? 9. How much have you moved in the Y direction? 12. Okay. But if I wanted to say, I want the position of B and let us say that the origin was somewhere here. Okay, I am going to say A's position vector, A's position vector is minus 15 I cap plus let us say 4 J cap. That means the origin is somewhere here far away and this is my R1 vector, right? So what is the position vector of B? What is the coordinates of B? If I find R2, then I will know what the coordinates of B are. But it's easy, right? R1 vector plus displacement vector will give me R2 vector. So how much is it? This plus that. So minus 15 plus 9 is what? Minus 6 i cap. 4 plus 12, 16 j cap meters. So this is our position vector for B. So what are the coordinates for B? Minus 6 comma 16. Is that understood? So you can use velocity vector to figure out displacement vector. You can figure out what the final position vector should be, etc. So quite straightforward, right? We will look at lots of applications of this. So suppose an object was moving with a velocity of, let us say, 10 meters per second, making an angle of something. Now a very, very good angle, which we will use a lot, is 37 degrees. I know you know angles, trigonometric ratios for 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, but 37 is the best angle. It turns out that you don't use it much because it's an approximate angle. You should be saying that this should be 36.9 degrees. Approximately, we will call it 37 degrees. What is so good about 37 degrees? Well, if you take this angle 37, this is 3, this is 4, and that is 5. 
This is the famous 3, 4, 5 triangle. So what is sine 37 degrees? 3 by 5. What is cos 37 degrees? 4 by 5. Okay, and tan 37, of course, you can find, but sin 37, cos 37, you should remember these two values. Similarly, this angle, this angle is 53 degrees. Okay, if this is 37, that must be 53 because this is 90 degrees, right? So that means if you look at cos 53 degrees, you will get 3 by 5 and sin 53 will be 4 by 5. So 37 and 53 are extremely good angles. The reason we will use this a lot is it's rational numbers, 3 by 5, 4 by 5, sin 30 half, very nice, but cos 30 root 3 by 2, okay. So let us say that this was 37 degrees, the calculation gets easier with 37 degrees. So suppose I tell you I am moving at 10 meters per second, 37 degrees and I go like this for 3 seconds. Then. After this, I am going in this direction horizontally at 8 meters per second for 2 seconds. That's my end point, right? What is my total displacement? Now adding these things like this is a little bit messy. But with vectors, it's very easy. 10 meters per second, angle of 37 degrees. Now you can actually directly write this is 30 meters. 30 meters. 10 meter per second into 3 seconds. If you want to write it in vector form, it is 30 cos 37, 30 into cos 37, cos 37, 4 by 5. And this is how much? 30 sin 37 which is 30 into 3 by 5 and we can calculate these things. This is 6 into 4, 24 and this is 6 into 3, 18, right? So I can write this vector as 24 i cap plus 18 j cap plus this much. What is this much? 8 into 2, 16 meters. So this vector is 24 i cap plus 18 j cap. This vector is 16 i cap. And so this vector plus this vector is a displacement vector s, right? So my s vector is this plus this plus this 40 i cap plus 18 j cap meters. Now if I want the length that you have traveled, your displacement magnitude which is just the vector with the magnitude. I'm just writing it without the arrow. It is root of 40 square plus 18 square. You can now calculate this. I'm not going to calculate this. So many meters. So is that idea clear? So if I'm moving like this and then moving like that, you can easily calculate how far you have moved. Though you have moved at various angles, this becomes very, very easy. So you convert everything to vector form and add it up. Simple. Okay. So this is one application of vectors. There are many more. When you're looking at motion, we will look at that in some of the examples. But let us also now look at and understand how vectors gets used with forces. Now let us take this block and let us say that I am exerting lots of forces in different, different directions. Okay. So if I basically exert a force like that and I exert one force like this, one force like that and let's say one force like that. Okay. Maybe I'm also pushing it this way. You want to find the net force which basically means you have to add it up, but add up as vectors, not add up as numbers, okay. So the easiest thing is if I gave you all the values, so suppose I gave you this as 8 newtons, this as 6 newtons, you know this is 6 i cap and that must be 8 j cap. Now this vector, I have to give it to you as a vector, so I am telling you that this force is 2 i cap plus let us say 6 j cap newtons. Can this be 2i cap plus 6j cap newtons? No, right? Because it's this way. So it must be minus 3 something i cap because it must be minus plus let us say 5j cap newtons. So this is force 1, force 2, force 3, 
force 4 and let us look at force 5. What is force 5? Force 5, let me cook up some number, it is pointing in that direction. So, minus 4 i cap plus 6 j cap and let us say the mass of the object is 10 kg. First thing that we need to do is to figure out what is the net force because you want to calculate acceleration. Newton's law says net force vector is mass into acceleration vector. Now, if you want to calculate acceleration vector, I must calculate net force vector. What is net force vector? Add it all up. Add up all the forces. Very easy to add up. What is F1? 8 J cap. What is F2? 2i cap plus 6j cap. What is F3? 6i cap because it is in that direction. What is F4? Minus 3i cap plus 5j cap. What is F5? Minus 4i cap plus 6j cap. Okay. Now if I want to add up all of these, this is quite straightforward. Add up all the i's. I, I, I and I. 2 plus 6, 8, minus 7. So, 8 minus 7, 1. So, just simply 1 I cap. I do not write the 1, I will just write I cap. And if you want the J caps, this fellow, this fellow, okay, because that was 6 um, J cap there. This is 6, this is 6 I cap, but that is 6 J cap. Okay, so 8, 6, then I have a 5 and then I have a 6, right? Any other J cap missed? All the rest of it is counted, right? So, 8 plus 6, 14. 14 plus 5 plus 6 is 11. 14 plus 11 is 25. So, plus 25 J cap, Newtons. Now, instead of doing this, this is one way to do this. But the same idea we could have also done by saying, Anyway, you must have something I cap plus something J cap, correct? You must have something I cap, something J cap. So, only first concentrate on the I cap. So, let us take all the I cap. No I cap, 2 I cap, 6 I cap, 2 plus 6, 8 I cap, minus 4. So, 2 plus 6 minus 4. So, 8 minus 4, 4. So, I have 4 I cap so far, minus 3, 4 minus 3, 1. So, I have 1 I cap, which was just I cap. Then you look at J cap, 8 J cap, so I am starting here, 8 J cap plus 6 J cap, 8 J cap, 6 J cap, forget, ignore the 2, do not worry about the I cap, focus on the J cap. So, 8, I cap, 8 J cap plus 6 J cap, 14 J cap, no J cap, no need to worry, plus 6, 14 plus 6, 20, 20 plus 5, 25. So, 25 J cap. We say we are just simply adding up Fx. Just add the x component of all the forces and then say Fx i cap. Then add up all the y components of the forces and then say Fy j cap. Once I found this, let us say the mass was 10, very easy to find acceleration. Acceleration is net force divided by mass. I found the net force. So, when I divide by 10, this is going to give me 0.1 I cap plus 25 by 10 is 2.5 J cap meters per second square. So, that is the acceleration of this object is going to be something like that. Okay, very small amount of I cap, but a very large amount of J cap. So, it is going to move somewhere in that direction. So, you are able to quickly find out acceleration once you know the forces as vectors. But now, every question may not give it to you in this form. They may tell you there is a force of 20 Newtons acting at an angle of 30 degrees. What will you do then? You will resolve. You basically will find the component that is called resolution. So, you take the vector and you say, let me find this component and that component. You will write it in the I plus J form. So, for example, if I take here, a force like this and a force like that. I will do it with only two forces. Okay. And let us say that this force was 20 Newtons making an angle. Now, the best angle I told you is 37 degrees. So, we will use one with 37 degrees. 
Now everything you cannot always say 37 degrees, right? So we'll use one with 60 degrees. And so this fellow is pointing at 60 degrees to the horizontal, but it's not 60 degrees with the positive. It is with the negative x-axis, okay? So let us say that this was 30 newtons. Then you want to find the net force. First of all, take the resolution. 20 cos 37. So 20 into cos 37 is how much? Sin 37, 3 by 5, cos 37, 4 by 5. So 20 into 4 by 5 I cap plus 20 into 3 by 5 J cap. That is this vector. And then what about this vector? 30 cos 60. Cos 60 is half. But remember, it is going to point in this direction. So should I say 30 into half I cap or should I put a minus sign? Should put a minus sign because it is pointing this way. And then I have 30 sin 60 which is going to be root 3 by 2 j cap. Now if I add this up, this is 15. This is going to give me 4. This is 16. 16 and 15 gives me 1. Again, it turns out that we have i cap. Okay, 1 i cap. And then if I look at this, this is going to be 15 root 3. 15 root 3. And then this is going to give me 4 into 3, 12. 15 root 3 plus 12 j cap newtons. So this is the net force. Understood? So you resolve, then you write the i cap, i cap, and then you basically add the i caps up. You could have also done 20 cos 37, 16. 30 cos 60 is 15. 16, 15. So therefore, net force in this direction, 1, which is what we got here. And the net force in this direction, 20 sin 37, that gives me 12. And 30 sin 60 gives me 15 root 3. So 15 root 3 plus 12 upward direction okay so that is j cap so this tells us how to quickly add up forces now if you somebody tells you that this object is in equilibrium that means the net force is zero so if you add up all of these here instead of getting this value you should have got zero you have got zero i cap plus zero j cap so many problems will say the object is in equilibrium like for example this object connected by some ropes like that and the earth is pulling it, this force, this force, and this force. So T1, T2, and Mg, the weight, together keeps the object in equilibrium. What does that mean? This vector plus this vector plus that vector, zero. How will I find it? You need to know the angle. You will basically be able to say so much in this direction, so much in that direction, so much in that direction. If you calculate all of that, you basically write I cap, J cap the total force must turn out to become zero. So these are some of the applications that we will come back to. The best way to understand all of the stuff that we have learned, we have learned a lot of different things, right? Is to apply this to a whole bunch of problems. Look at how you use vectors practically in solving problems. Because once you do that, you will get a very good feel for vectors.